Hello, listeners, and welcome to this episode of The Cult News. I'm your speaker, Casey, host of The Cult Vault podcast, and in these videos, I aim to bring you up to speed with all things cults unfolding around the world. If you find this content helpful or interesting, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And to support the show further, you can find me at patreon.com forward slash the cult vault. But now, on to the news. News coming from the troubled teen industry today. A school named Greenbrier Academy for Girls has announced its permanent closure. This is a school known within the anti-troubled teen industry space as being notorious for totalistic control and abuse of the female students that are forced to be there. The Academy released a public statement detailing that they can no longer obtain insurance as a for-profit entity. It seems that insurance companies are realising the risk is too high now, endorsing and supporting systemic institutionalised child abuse, and that the multiple lawsuits piling up around for-profit centres such as this one make it too risky to insure these programmes to begin with. It seems that insurance companies are realising that the risk is too high now that multiple lawsuits are being filed against numerous programmes, many of which are being forced to close down permanently also. The Academy ends their statement by saying, we are sorry, which has been commented on by survivors as being a bit insulting. My only hope is that those that were being subjected to this program are not forced quickly into another program and are returned safely home. You can check out the r slash trouble teen subreddit for survivor testimony on Greenbrier Academy where people talk about sexual harassment and abuse that they are subjected to adding fuel to the fire that is burning down these abusive schools and programs. There is incredible work taking place in this space and the activists involved have my utmost admiration. Included in these activists is one of the pioneers in whistleblowing against the troubled teen industry and that is Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton has released a new memoir this week that includes segments of her time within the abusive programme at Provo Canyon School, Utah which is infamous for being one of the harshest programmes individuals have been subjected to. Within this memoir, Paris details being given a new name, subjected to total dominance, and even being forced to endure repeated body cavity searches. Paris, the memoir, is out now. The LA Times has reported about a new memoir out this week by Michelle Dowd titled The Forager, which details Dowd's time in a religious family cult. According to the article... Because the book is so focused on the 10 years during which she was fully a member of the field, an atmosphere of ambivalence hangs over the narrative. It was unquestionably a time of abuse and violation, made all the worse because God became a curtain for everybody to hide behind. Silence is conspiracy, just as it is consent, she writes. In our family, we turn quiet when we are lost, and we have been trained to look up, not to one another. Forager is available now on all major platforms and is written by Michelle Dowd. More news this week on the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In regards to arrested and incarcerated Samuel Bateman, Bateman has apparently been using jail phone calls to abuse children where records have been kept, calls have been monitored and notes have been taken. He's also apparently been grooming children during these phone calls whilst he awaits official sentencing. Samuel Bateman was arrested a few weeks ago for human trafficking and child sexual abuse. But I will do a deeper look at this entire story later on. The article is up on Daily Mail online if anyone is interested in taking a closer look. For anyone keeping up to date with the Laurie Vallow and Chad Daybell court case, you'll know by now that the defendants will be tried separately after the judge severed the proceedings in two, following key evidence being submitted. So far, we know the evidence is a strand of hair, but who it belongs to and where it was officially discovered has not been disclosed or made public. Laurie Vallow Daybell's trial is officially due to begin on April 3rd, with the Idaho judge resisting any attempts for live streaming, audio recording or even a sketch artist. So far, the judge has ordered total lockdown until a week or so ago. When a select number of reporters were given permission to listen to the trial live through audio transmission in a separate part of the courthouse, where live tweets will be allowed. 
The reporters have pulled money together to spread the cost of a sketch artist who has been permitted to enter the courtroom and release only a few sketches a day. People are claiming that the Mormon church is having significant influence over this court trial and they are the reason that information is not being made public in the way other court cases of this calibre would be. Laurie Vallow Daybell is on trial for the murder of her two children, Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow, after creating a cult following with dangerous and extremist teachings, which resulted in many suspicious deaths. I have covered this case in full, but before the trial begins, where Vallow Daybell could receive the death penalty, I'll aim to do a summary video including the timeline and discussing the lives of Tylee and JJ. Another Daily Mail online article about another memoir has also been featured this week, discussing a new book titled The Messiah's Bride by Stephanie Henricks. It says in 1993, teenager Stephanie Henricks was dreaming of owning a horse, leaving school and marrying Hollywood heartthrob Keanu Reeves. But God had other plans for the dreamy 13-year-old girl. Stephanie's devout German family belonged to a controversial doomsday cult led by self-proclaimed Australian prophet William Cam then aged 44. The article is titled How Australian Doomsday Cult Leader Lured a 14-Year-Old Into Sex by Posing as the Virgin Mary Before Fathering Her Child and the Discovery of Old Letters that Sealed His Eventual Downfall. Stephanie Hendrick's family was lured into a cult when she was aged only 11. She was first sexually assaulted by the Doomsday Leader at age 14 and the book The Messiah's Bride tells her story which is out now. Would just like to make a point here that the wording of this article says she first had sex with the doomsday leader at 14. That's not accurate. She was raped at age 14 because he was an adult and at 14 you cannot give informed consent because you are a child. And something else I wanted to point out about some other problematic news reporting is this article on the Daily Star about the upcoming Netflix documentary about David Koresh and the Branch Davidians as it's been 30 years since the siege at Mount Carmel. This Daily Star article is titled Cult Leader in Haunting New Netflix Doc Told Men to be Celibate While Bonking Their Wives. First of all, when it comes to coercive control, if it's of a financial nature, if it's of an emotional nature, if it's of a sexual nature, Using the terms bonking their wives is not helpful for anybody. It's not sensitive to survivors. It's not educational for people trying to learn about cults. So if we're going to be highlighting the fact that these resources are being released on platforms like Netflix, we shouldn't be adding to the already uninformed and already inaccurate perceptions of cult victims and survivors, especially those that, that died on this day in the fire in Waco, there is enough media in the world now on the subject of cults for this type of language not to exist. There's no excuse for this anymore. So it's great that these documentaries are being released and that newspapers are covering the fact that these documentaries are going to be released so that we can all learn more and all educate ourselves more. But let's just start changing the way we report on cults. This is frustrating to say the least. A couple of small pieces before we finish up. Swarm is a new Amazon Prime series that has been released and it is the singer-songwriter Billie Eilish's acting debut. The series is created by Donald Glover, also known as Childish Gambino, and is being hailed by critics as almost perfect and brilliant. It is Billie Eilish in the role of a charismatic cult leader. And I will check that out this week and let you know my thoughts. And to finish up with today, I just wanted to direct you all towards The Sun. The US and the UK has reported this week on an ongoing lawsuit between the Odyssey Study Group and Spencer Schneider, author of Manhattan Cult Story and friend of the Cult Vault podcast. Spencer Schneider is suing the Odyssey Study Group after being a part of it for 25 years and being subjected to human trafficking and extreme emotional and physical damages. Schneider reports to The Sun that Sharon Gans, matriarch and deceased co-founder and leader of the Odyssey Study Group, used secret lectures to bully, humiliate and brainwash members of the school. Spencer Schneider's lawsuit is in the early stages, but we hope it's another positive step towards getting this group shut down as they continue to exist, recruit and abuse individuals as far as we know. That is the end of this news segment. 
Thank you for tuning in. And if you found this video helpful or interesting, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons and share this content with your friends. Tune in next week for more current cult affairs with me, your speaker Casey, host of the Cult Vault podcast.